Assalamualaikum and good day. In this video, we're going to learn some basic things about GSP for web application. So we're going to cover four subtopics. The first one is overview of GSP. Second is how GSP process. Third one is MVC in GSP. Fourth is GSP scripting elements. Okay, let's start with what is basically GSP file. JSP file is an HTML page with some Java code sprinkled in the file and it contains dynamic content from Java code. In the HTML file, as you can see, you can start with HTML code, then followed by Java code and also some more HTML code and also so on. Right, so where is the JSP process? So the JSP is processed on the web server such as your Glassfish server in the NetBeans, Tomcat Apache server if you use Eclipse and then the results of the Java code are included in the HTML will be returned to the web browser. So here an example, we have a browser, we make a request to GSP page and then the GSP will process the Java code on the web server and generate the results in HTML and return the response back to the browser. Next is where to place JSP file. The JSP file goes into the web content folder in the web project application. One requirement for JSP is uh, it must have .jsp extension. So here an example of NetBeans. So you put all your JSP files in this folder, web pages folder, and then you do have web IMF where your web.xml is reside here so in the web pages so this is the list of your gsp file next is the example of gsp code where you can see that the gsp code is embedded with the html tag in this gsp file you can see it start with html tag that is h3 and then it says the time on the server is so this is a little bit of uh, java code that start with jsp expression and followed by the java code new java.util.date so this is a method okay we use equal sign after the uh, jsp start code to display the date time using the java code then we include the output of the new object of date in this page so basically, this code will call out the string method to display the value of new object of the date time and return the HTML back to the browser. Right, let's move on to MVC. So MVC stands for Model View Controller. So it is a design pattern that separates the business logic, presentation logic, and data. Controller acts as an interface between view and model. Controller intercepts all the incoming requests. Model represents the state of the application, for example, data. So it can also have business logic. View represents the presentation, such as UI, user interface. So the advantage of MVC architecture is actually the navigation control is centralized and easy to maintain the large application. So in the MVC framework shows here, JSP acts as a view component where it communicates with model component to process data that will be displayed to the browser. JSP also has its own life cycle. It starts with init event where JSP init method is called. The container calls this event method to initialize server instance. It is also called only once for the server instance and preceded every other method. Then when the request and response are evoked by the browser, the JSP service method will be called. The container calls this JSP service method for each request and pass it to the uh, objects that related. Finally, when the destroy event happens, this method will be called by the container be just before the destruction of the instance. Next, let's look at the JSP scripting elements or construct. So basically, there are three types of scripting element you can use to insert Java code into the results JSP. So they are expression, scripts, and declaration. 
Expression is used to insert a Java expression directly into the output. Scriptlets enables you to insert a Java statement into the servlet JSP service method, which is invoked by the service method in the JSP lifecycle. Declaration is for declaring methods or fields into the servlet. Alright, let's look more detail about each of the scripting elements. So we can use JSP expression to write dynamic content back to the browser. If the output of expression is Java primitive, the value is printed back to the browser. So if the output is an object, then the results of calling to string on the object is output to the browser. So the scripting elements are embedded in um, the syntax start back, percentage with equal, and then you have the expression of java code here and then close by the close tag uh, with the percentage sign just before the close tag so this is an example of expression so the first one is actually print fred flintstone the browser and the second one is you're using a max function there so you're calling mat dot square root 100 so it will print out 10 to the browser so next, let's look at scriptlet. So we can use scriptlets to embed Java code in JSP page. So when contents of JSP scriptlets go into the JSP page service method in the JSP lifecycle, the code will be processed and display the results back to the browser. So the scriptlets are written in this syntax. So basically, it has the start back percentage and you have all the scriptlet over there and then close by the percentage and also close tag of the limiters. So this is an example of scriptlets. So basically you can see that I'm using integer x equal to 5, integer y equal to 7, and then integer z is x plus y. So this is what we call scriptlets. Next, let's look at declaration. So we can use declaration to define methods and instant variables. So this scripting type do not produce any output to be displayed in the web browser. The declaration scripting is embedded in this syntax. So it starts with start tag, percentage, and exclamation mark, and then close with the close tag of GSP. So here are two examples of methods that declare in the declaration scripting. So the first one is public void JSP destroy and then inside the method JSP destroy you have system dot dot print line JSP destroy so this is just to print out JSP destroy text on the browser second one is public void JSP init so this is an init method just to print out the text JSP loaded so the last one you have something like integer my bar equal to one two three okay Let's move on to the next one is JSP comments. So JSP also have the comments um, syntax. So the syntax will be similar to HTML. As you can see, the HTML starts with start tag, exclamation, and two hyphen. And then these are all the command. And then close with the two hyphen and also close tag. So if you don't want the comment appear in the resultant HTML file, you can use this for JSP. So start back JSP hyphen JSP command and close tag JSP uh, close tag. Alright, so next let's look at the example of um, JSP scripting element. So basically this is an example for computing factorial. So you can see that I start with HTML start tag and then with the title factorial and then in the body of the HTML I use JSP. So I start with JSP scriptlet. So I have a for loop here, and then in between I have a an expression here. So this is factorial of. So I want to print out the value of i. So this is an example of the expression, and then this is the method call. So I also want to call the compute factorial method from this JSP declaration. So here you can see that this is JSP declaration, the one that has method definition with the implementation inside the method. So basically this is all the 
JSP scripting element in one file. So this is the result for this uh, computing factor JSP file. That's all for now. For more details on JSP for web development, please read chapter 401 in my Google site. See you in next video.